back to the 21 Convention 2017 of Orlando, Florida, the 10 year anniversary of our company and this event. Our next speaker was recommended to me by Rolo Tomasi, good friend of his. He's also at realchristianmcqueen.com and is the podcast host on Man and Demand Radio. Without further ado, please help me welcome Christian McQueen to the stage. All right, guys, so my voice is going because I spent uh, about 30 minutes early this morning licking this girl's pussy. <laughs> Hand to God, I'm not kidding. She asked me, I pulled her out of the club and she asked me, yeah, can I sit on your face? And she had a fucking fat ass, so I was like, sure. Um, and I thought it was gonna be like a five, 10 minute thing and she just wouldn't get off. So I'm just like, fuck it. So my voice is definitely going out, but I'm gonna try to talk loud if you can't hear me. Move closer. Um, so, like Anthony said, I'm Christian McQueen. I have the blog, realchristianmcqueen.com. Uh, it's millions of readers. Started it in 2014, kind of on a whim. A lot of people told me, I used to write for Return of Kings way back in the day. And uh, people were like, why don't you have a blog? And I was like, yeah, why don't I have a blog? So I started it and it just kind of took off. Um, it was never just like a planned thing. And then I met Rollo, and uh, we became good friends. I did a seminar in Vegas called the A Man in Demand Seminar. And Rollo was a speaker, Tanner Guzzi, and Goldman. And, uh, and then I was like, I'm never doing this again. Because <laughs> it takes a lot of work, a ton of work. So actually, I forgot to say this, but I want everyone, let's give Anthony uh, a clap because Because honestly, the amount of work that goes into planning something like this, putting it together, it's not like a week. I mean, I'm sure he plans it all year. Probably as soon as this ends, he starts planning the next one. So it takes a lot of work, and, uh, and I respect him for putting this together. And in, in this era that we live in, I know uh, Jim, the speaker from before, who did a great job. I don't know, I can't see him because of the lights. But, um, you know, it's true. In, this, in 2017, like men, like-minded men being able to come together, uh, and talk about shit without it being looked at weird. I'm sure some of you work in like a corporate environment and you know you have to censor what you say. Uh, God forbid nowadays you say men and women are different, you know, you're gonna get fired. Um, so the, in events like this are important, it's good. So my lecture today is called Become the Boss, How to Get Money, Freedom, and the Life You've Always Dreamed Of. But before I get started, I wanna talk about Andrew. So, all of you should know about him, Andrew, a.k.a. Private Man. I had the privilege a long time ago of interviewing him on Man and Demand Radio, and it was uh, one of my favorite guests to have because he was not only very knowledgeable on a lot of subjects, but um, just so giving. Andrew was a giver. He would give of his time. Um, I don't even know if he ever really... Mo He's got a squeaky creak up here. I don't know if he ever even monetized his, um, his blog that I know of that much. He really just gave. And I have a lot of respect for him. And uh, you guys should still check out his blog. It's still up there, theprivateman.wordpress.com, especially for um, men who have been divorced, men who are married, he kind of specialized in. But I just want to have a quick, just a moment of silence um, for Andrew and his memory. All right, so I only ask of you two things in this presentation, and you're, you're totally not gonna do them. Uh, at some point, you'll break one of them. But just keep an open mind for an hour. It might even be less, I talk fast. Since I moved to New York a year ago, I talk even faster. So before I got up here, Goldman, uh, who also lives in New York, he's like, remember, just don't talk. Uh-oh, something bad happened. Just pulled <laughs> up someone else's. Anyway, Goldman had told me, he goes, make sure you don't talk super fast. He goes, you know you're like so fucking high energy anyway. So. <sighs> All right, we're back. Keep an open mind for an hour, and can you just ignore your phones? I know it's so distracting. Listen, I got my phone up here too. 
and it was going off while I was talking. I was already looking out of the corner of my eye. We're just, we're a phone generation. But if you can, just pay attention. I'll keep it as entertaining as I can. So a little heads up warning. I'm blunt. I swear a lot. So if that offends you, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I'm here to help you, not coddle you. Uh, in this generation, this is what we're dealing with right now. It's the coddled generation. The fucking riots because of Trump is because people uh, haven't learned that sometimes you don't get your way, right? So I'm not going to coddle you. I'm just going to put this information out there. Also, at the end, I am going to offer an opportunity to join my online business course. It's a digital course. And uh, if that offends you, feel free to walk out now. I won't get offended. I know sometimes people get offended when they go to a seminar and there's like an upsell at the end. And I'm just putting it out there now. I will talk about it a little bit. It'll be like five minutes. Um, but I'm putting it out there now because that annoys me too. There's nothing more annoying than like paying to go some to something and the whole time they talk about this other thing you should join. And it's like, what the fuck? Give me some value and then maybe pitch me. What's the difference? Becoming the boss part one. The Rock. Who here knows who Dwayne The Rock Johnson is? Right? Everybody. So he's on a show called ba uh, Ballers. It's a fun show. It's, uh, it's, uh, I believe it's HBO. It's kind of like an entourage, if you guys remember entourage. So he's the highest paid actor in the world. Uh, I think Mark Wahlberg just supplanted him. But he, he does like 60, 70 million a year, right? He went from poverty to wealth. When he got started, he had like 11 bucks in his pocket. And there's a scene in this um, show that I saw a few months ago, and it hit me because it's just fucking brilliant. This show is known more, known more for um, tits and funny jokes. You know, it's not necessarily like a deep um, philosophical show. But anyway, the setting is The Rock and his co-star and business partner on the show are stuck in traffic. So they're in Miami. They're stuck in traffic, and they're trying to get to this meeting um, to get this hotel financier to give them money to order to move an NFL team to Vegas. It's basically the most important meeting of their life. If they're fucking late, the financier told them, if you're late, like you're done. I'm not doing it. And they need this guy's fucking money. So at this point, they're sitting there. They're frustrated. They're stressed out. I think The Rock's like taking Vicodin or some shit, like trying to calm down. And The Rock's business partner, Joe, he goes, you know, maybe we're just not cut out for this type of stress. And she just back off the idea. And The Rock, he responds with this story. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But he goes, my dad worked hard for 30 years in the coal mines. He never complained, and he was always a good employee. One day, he gets a call to go in and see the big boss. So he goes in to see him. First time he's met him in 30 years. And then Joe says, so what did the boss say? And The Rock says, nothing. And Joe says, nothing? What the fuck kind of story is this? And The Rock said, nothing. He said, nothing. See, it's not about what the boss said. It's about what he didn't say, Joe. He didn't say anything interesting at all. So after 30 years, my dad had the chance to sit across from the man who was running everything, and you know what he saw? Nothing. Nothing special. My dad realized in that moment he could have been that guy sitting behind the desk, but he realized it too late. We're all just a bunch of guys, Joe, but some of us believe we can do anything, and some of us believe we can't. Some of us believe we can do anything, and some of us believe we can't. If you can believe, you can be an entrepreneur. But there's some myths that I'm going to dispel today. The myths of entrepreneurship. Myth one, entrepreneurship is for everyone. Everyone should start a business. Everyone should be an entrepreneur. I'm sure you guys have seen, um, I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of big um, entrepreneurs, and they have a big social media presence that push this, right? Everyone start a business. Everyone fucking quit your job tomorrow and go live in your garage and, and create something. And I think that's bullshit. Um, the reality is most people are inherently lazy. So entre entrepreneurship won't work for them, right? If someone is not fucking self-motivated, if they can't even get up 
in the morning and be motivated to do some push-ups, how the fuck are they going to start a company? Right? So most people are inherently lazy. Most people don't believe in themselves or they're product enough. Right? People are afraid to ask for the sale. How many times have maybe you've gone into a car dealership or a fucking Radio Shack? I don't even know if Radio Shack's still around. But stuff like that. And the, and the salesperson's like, well, you know, uh, if you're interested, I mean, if you want, Motherfucker, I came in here to buy something. Don't talk me out of it, right? They're afraid to ask for the sale. If you don't believe in your product, if you don't believe that it can change people's lives, then you do not need to be selling. You do not need to be an entrepreneur. Most people are sheep and prefer to live their life with a shepherd, right? People love security. Why do you think we're giving away our rights? I mean, don't even get me started on the politics stuff, but you know, the people are essentially trading their privacy for security. Most people are inconsistent when starting a new endeavor, right? This is fitness, game, business, doesn't matter. Tell a dude, go approach 100 girls, come back, right? He goes approach three girls, comes back. Man, I don't know, it's just not, it doesn't work. Go approach 97 more girls and then come talk to me. Your sample size is too small. You can tell someone, all right, you want to get in shape. You need to hit the gym consistently, whatever. I'm not a fitness expert, but whatever. Let's say four times a week and eat this, blah, blah, blah. They're probably going to last a week and they're going to quit. Um, you can't be a quitter when you're an entrepreneur. You just can't. Most people are inconsistent. I already said that one. If you have very low risk tolerance personality, then you'll probably fail. Entrepreneurship is inherently risky. I mean, if you're one of those people that you like to play it safe and you're just like, eh, and you get nervous, you know, going to a yellow light, then you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. If you are not a self-starter, then you will probably fail, right? You must be a self-motivated person or at least be motivated and passionate enough about your product or your business um, to fucking put everything into it, to risk it all, to put all the fucking chips on the table. Myth two, and this one kills me. I can follow my passion and build a business from it. I see this all the time on fucking uh, Instagram ads, Twitter ads. Um, there's a particular lady, she's a girl, she used to live in my neighborhood when I lived in Los Angeles. And she's averaging around 250, 300,000 a month in income. So she's making, whatever, a few million a year from her business, which is teaching people how to make money online. But I'm one of those people, I can't stand the motherfuckers who teach people how to make money online, and that's how they make money online, right? There's a, there's a disconnect. Like in other words, if you've, if you've created a niche product, uh, you know, dating, fitness, whatever, and you've made money and you fucking actually, it works, and then you tell people, hey, this is how I did it, that's different. But there's this huge mass you know, of people that like that's how they're making their money is telling you, hey, buy this, and that's how you make money online. Motherfucker, I'm buying this, and that's how you're making the money online. Um, in other words, don't teach it if you, unless you've fucking lived it. But the reality is there's a lot of people getting rich from that. And they push this, right? Follow your passion. You, you know, it's your heart. Follow your feelings. That's the worst fucking thing to do in business. If your passion is not in a niche which spends money, you're not going to make a dime, right? Um, someone's passion could be like underwater, naked basket weaving. I don't know if there's a target market for that, right? So you can be as passionate as fuck, but that passion's not going to pay your bills. If you do not have an audience that's going to spend money. If your passion makes you some pocket change, but you can't scale it up, that is a hobby. That's not a business, right? A lot of people are in the hobby business. A lot of people jumped into the whole blogging world. Um, they still are, but they were like, yeah, I'm going to start a blog and make money from it because I see that dude's doing it and that dude's doing it. Not seeing the 18 hours a day they've gone into it, right? And they sell a couple books a month and they say they have a business. It's not a fucking business, it's a hobby. If you are hitting a cap in the amount of people who are interested in that niche, then you will plateau, right? That's why they always say health, wealth, dating. Uh, I think there's another one, but there's like the big ones, right? Those are niches that have been around forever. They probably always will. People want to get rich, people want to get pussy, people want to get in shape, right? So there's an unlimited amount of people really in those, in those uh, genres. The reason most small businesses fail is because they are creating what they think the market wants, but not what is actually needed or desired. 
right? So we've done it. I've done it before. I've created a product. I only did it once. I was like, I'll never do that again. Created the product. I'm like, yeah, dudes are going to love this. Da, 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 da. Came out with it. I'm like, fucking crickets. I was like, damn, I guess people are not interested in this. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, when you're creating a product, it's in something that people want. And there's ways to do that. I'm not getting into this tonight. Um, but you can do surveys and all that. You can find out, hey, what are you guys struggling with? Oh, I'm struggling with this specific, you know, aspect of my life. All right, enough dudes are saying that. Create a product to solve that. Boom, you're going to sell it. Myth three, I found something where there's no competition. I'm going to get rich. Well, probably because it actually sucks. Odds are you thought of a product idea that no one wants. In 2017, it is extremely hard to be original. It's very hard to come up with something that hasn't already been done. Competition in your product niche is great, right? People go, I don't know if I want to get in that industry because there's a lot of competition. That also means there's a lot of customers. It means there's a demand and that target audience spends money. This is one of my favorite things because if you want to start a successful business, and I'm focusing mostly talking about online business, but uh, a lot of times you don't need to reinvent the wheel. People get so caught up in thinking they need to have this super original fucking idea. Let's take my Christian McQueen brand for a moment. How many motherfuckers are in the dating niche? Tons. It's been done a billion times before. David D'Angelo, Ross Jeffries, right? All, everyone. So when I jumped into it, a, I didn't jump into it not knowing what I was talking about. I think someone should never teach something unless they actually have lived it. They've experienced it and they've bled for it and they know what they're talking about. Because that's fucked up to mislead people, right? And there's charlatans and people out there that do that. But, um, but you don't, I didn't say, okay, well, I'm not going to get in the dating niche because there's other people in it. No, I said, what's my unique story, right? Uh, I know Anthony, you guys have probably heard his story about the whole BPD acts and all that. And I went through a similar experience. <laughs> it was fucking hell. Um, so yeah, so I had that to draw from, right? And how I overcame that, whatnot. So that's my story, right? Using yourself when you're creating your product. That's how you make it unique. So you're not reinventing the wheel. You're just painting it a different color, right? And you're improving it. You're, you're putting a twist on it. Your unique twist is the market advantage. So something I really got, want you guys to think about, this is really key, right? You cannot be me as good as I can be me. I cannot be you as good as you can be you. So by that I mean use yourself. Don't be a copycat. You can be influenced by people, right? You're seeing a lot of speakers. You can be like, oh, I like CMQ's, his style or how he talks. And I like Tanner, you know, how he teaches. And, you know, Rollo's philosophical, da, da, da. And you can take pieces from us as you're, you know, improving yourself. But you don't want to be a copycat because you're never going to be as good as the original. Um, when you're trying to be like them, right? Be yourself. The easiest way to start a successful business is to study what the successful have already done and then duplicate their process, not their product. I'm not talking about copying. I'm not talking about ripping people's products off. I'm talking about the process, right? So if Joe Blow, you know, makes a million a year because he created a dating course. Perfect example is I have um, something called amanindemand.com. It's an online, like, academy for guys. Everything from body language to fucking fucking. And uh, it was not an original idea. The Art of Charm had the Art of a Charm Academy. And I remember seeing that and going, that's fucking smart. They've got like a few thousand guys in this, paying $67 a month. And once the product's created, they don't have to create anything else. It's the beauty of digital products, right? You have like a 90, fucking 93% profit margin or something. So I was like, I'm going to take that idea, that process, and create my own, right? So a Man in Demand Academy is not an original idea, but it's original content because it's mine, right? And all the videos and all that, obviously, I did and put my own thing on it. Um, but that's an example. So there are some exclusions to this, right? Groundbreaking, changing concepts, including like technology, health treatments. Obviously, if someone comes out with a fucking cure for cancer, um, they have no competition, right? But it's also a moneymaker. Uh, Airbnb, Uber, we're seeing a lot of things happen now where the company doesn't even really own anything, right? Uber's like, let's take people who need a car and people with a car and just create the technology to connect them. Billions of dollars later. Airbnb, they don't own anything, 
right? People have an apartment, motherfuckers are sick of staying at the hotels, let's connect them. And it changed everything. So if you are cut out for being an entrepreneur, here's the mind blowing benefits. So, you know, I'm talking, it might seem kind of negative or depressing, but I'm talking a little bit about, you know, the people who are not cut out for this, because most people aren't, that's just a fact. If you're on the fence and you're like, maybe, maybe I could be an entrepreneur, or I'm kind of interested in it, or I'm sick of having a boss, then uh, here's some benefits. The benefits of entrepreneurship. So everyone wins when you do it right, right? When you create a product, a service, and you do it right, everybody's winning. The world, because you're providing a real solution to their problem, right? People go, how do I make money, Christian? What are people's problems, right? Dudes want to get laid. Dudes want to get paid. Women are freaking out, every woman will, about aging. Why do you think the co uh, cosmetics industry is, is so much? Right, multi-billion dollar industry. Anti-aging, people don't want to get old. People want six pack, right? When you, when you figure out, uh, you know, okay, people have this problem, they put the solution in front of them, uh, then they win, right? You're providing a real solution. I'm talking about real solutions. I'm not talking about the bullshit that gets sold. Um, whoever came up with these spinners, like that just blows my mind. I think it's just the most fucking retarded thing. Um, but they're making money, you know, maybe it relieves people's stress, I don't know. Improve people's lives to the better. Right? There's no greater call in life, I believe. If you can create a product that changes people's lives for the better. I think that's where it's at. You know, you can make money doing a lot of shit, right? You could be a drug dealer and make money, but are you helping people? It's not just about the money. Are you creating a product that is really having a positive impact on that person? You, you win because the feeling of helping people is priceless. I mean, we just, what did the convention start yesterday? And I've had multiple guys come up to me and pull me to the side and tell me how much my writings changed their life and improved their life and helped them get a girlfriend or helped them do this and that. That feeling is priceless. You can't put a fucking price tag on that. And then you win because you can make real money, even while you sleep, right? That's why I'm such a huge proponent of making money online because A, the startup costs are a joke, and B, it's scalable and your store is always open. I always say it's like putting a storefront in everybody's living room. Really, now it's like putting your store in everyone's pocket, right? They got a phone. You have a website. All you got to do is just get your store in front of their face. You get enough people in front of there, your conversions are high enough, you'll make money. It's not rocket science. So benefit one, you help the world with real solutions. This world has a ton of problems. Identify the problems. Figure out solutions, and you'll get rich. Living a life where you are helping people is extremely satisfying for your soul. Right? This cannot be ignored. A lot of people who are always in, they're, you know, I don't know why I'm depressed. I don't know why I feel negative. Motherfucker, help people. Go out on the street and give the homeless man some money. Or go down to the soup kitchen and fucking, you know, give him soup. I got a buddy of mine. <laughs> that was brilliant. Put that in the highlight reel. Um, I have a buddy of mine, and he's a business partner actually on, a, on a, one, another website. He's like an investment banker in New York. So total Wall Street type, you know, works 120 hours, makes a shit ton of money, hates his life. Um, and that's why he wanted to start making money online because he's like, I can't do this forever. But anyway, all the money they make, you know, bonus season, I think is like January, February. You know, so he gets the big bonus and they, you know, they go get a new Rolex and all this and that's great. But he's like, man, I'm feeling so empty. So this dude actually started going down to a soup kitchen in New York a couple times a week in the morning and he's getting so much satisfaction out of giving and helping others, right? We're not just put on this earth to drink alcohol and fuck women, although that is a lot of fun. You'll always be able to make money if you're solving problems and then make the world a better place to live in, right? I know I'm so thankful Uber's around. I can't stand it. When I do have to use a taxi now, I'm just like, ugh, right? Motherfucker doesn't speak English, the car's dirty. So that made the world a better place to live in. Benefit two, improve people's lives for the better. No greater call in life. So the first email or phone call you have with someone or in-person meeting is where it's like really the most powerful, where they express how much you've helped their life with your product will give you a real joy and a sense of satisfaction. When someone says, hey man, I've had it happen. You know, that article, the timing, uh, like it, taught, it basically pulled me from the edge of the cliff. Like I was contemplating suicide. I mean, that's a pretty good feeling. You literally potentially probably saved someone's life. 
If you have a product that can help people, you should be excited to sell it and get it in front of many people as possible. People that are timid about their product, this, this one kills me. When people are like, well, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you. Why not? You have a product. It is a solution. They have a problem. Put the fucking solution in front of the problem. Of course you should be happy. Now there's a way to do that. There's the people that are all fucking snake oil salesmen and real slick, which is annoying and we all see through that. And then there's just like, look, yes, I have a product. I think this could help you. I think this solution will work for you. You can take it or leave it. It's up to you, right? And the, the latter one is the more effective. But you should be excited about it. You know, if you feel nervous when you first start selling or you have a website and telling people about it, that's, that's understandable, right? Especially if you're an introvert, if you're not really used to putting yourself out there. Um, I think it was a natural fit for me when I got into online business because I'm just naturally out there, right? I am outgoing. I am very much like, look, here I am. Um, three, when you change people's lives for the better, aka, I just talked about this, they went from suicidal to happy and approving, you'll leave a legacy behind when you die. So for example, Andrew, RIP, helped men worldwide and his passing was not in vain. As sad as it was, think about how, how many men he helped and women. I think he had a lot of female readers too, right? So he left something behind that will live on probably forever. I mean, I don't know how long he paid for his hosting, but I'm just saying, you know, like it'll live on and people will stumble across, uh, on that, on those articles and read it and it'll improve their lives even though he's already passed. Right, he left behind writings that will continue to help men for a very long time. This is noble, good, and something worth doing. When you create a product or you create a brand or you create an online presence that helps people in some manner, shape, or form, it could be diet pills if they actually fucking work. Most of them are bullshit. But, you know, if it actually helps people, that's awesome. You're actually leaving behind a legacy and an impact on people. Benefit three, this is huge. It gives you purpose. A stagnant man is a dying man. This is, this is so true. A man without purpose is a listless and hopeless man. A man with no purpose eventually gives up. Rollo was there, Tanner was there, Goldman was there when I did my speech at a man to man seminar on um, basically, you know, the condition of men today, the high suicide rates that the media will not fucking cover. Let's all bend a knee for that. Um, Right? But a lot of this is because the stagnant. Men were not designed to fucking sit all the time and then sit on and watch Netflix on the weekend, maybe get a blowjob a couple times a year. That's not living. No wonder we feel fucking lethargic. No wonder you feel depressed, right? You need to have purpose. When you're excited about what you're doing every day, then you'll look forward to Mondays instead of dreading them. How many people here, if you want to raise your hand, it's fine, but how many people here, I'm curious, work um, and by traditional job, I mean like you work for someone else in some capacity. How many? All right, and how many of you consider yourself entrepreneurs? Good amount. You guys know you probably look forward to Monday, right? Because you know you're going to make a big chunk of money. You're going to make money. You're going to make the majority of the profit. It's not your boss saying, let me scrape off a little bit to keep this motherfucker coming back every day. And then next year, I might give you a 3% raise. A man with purpose is an attractive man to women. This is a fact, right? Women get turned on by a man with vision, purpose, and drive. Do not underestimate this. And I'm not talking about you having to have already made it. Yes, women are attracted to men who are already have made it. But they're also very attracted to men that are on their way up. And I don't mean that in a gold digging sense. It could be maybe you're an artist and your passion is painting. It's not even really a money thing for you, but you're just, you're driven to be the best artist, um, not the best, because you can't really measure it like that, but just like a great artist, right? Women are draw they're drawn to that, because you have a purpose. Your life is not, you know, her life. You're not moving across the country because she got into a different school, right? You have a purpose. Babe, this is what I'm doing. You can come the fuck along or not. It's up to you. I don't give a fuck, but I'm doing it. Ooh, right? <laughs> she literally gets tingles in her vagina from it. It's not, I mean, it's a fact. And then what you can say is, and you can reach out and be like, how wet are you right now? Right? Because they are. Benefit four, it gives you freedom. And freedom is fucking everything. Now, specifically, an online business allows you to leverage your time. Um, I'm one of those people, and a little background on me. 
I've done every job under the sun. I have arthritis in my right hand from doing commercial um, concrete, specifically construction. I was a laborer. Um, worked at UPS, loaded semi trucks. I actually got employee of the month one year. I couldn't believe it, or one month. And they gave me a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> I knew it was rigged at that point. I'm like, what? A t-shirt that says UPS. I'm not gonna wear this. Um, so everything, right? Started when I was like 12, delivering newspapers. And I found out, hey, you know, Mrs. Chuckles, whatever the fuck her name is, if I actually prop the newspaper up, then come Christmas time, she'll give me 20 bucks, right? So you develop things. Every little job, this is a sidebar, but whatever job you're working now, I don't care how much you hate it, I don't care if you're at a fucking T-Mobile kiosk, done that too, done the mobile, you know, not mobile phones, but kiosk and all that, you can learn something from it, right? And a lot of it you can learn is, I don't ever wanna fucking do this again. So you wanna talk about motivation, um, there is nothing more valuable in your life than personal freedom. To be able to do what you want, when you want, without anyone lording over your shoulder is how man is designed to live. Now, I get it. Um, not everyone can be an entrepreneur. Not everyone can be a boss because obviously the world would collapse. There has to be worker bees, right? But you do have a choice. I mean, it's 2017. There has never been an easier time ever than to become a millionaire to have an online business, to create a business with like two, 300 bucks and then literally turn it into an empire. There's never been an easier time. You gotta think back, the old, the old G's, what they had to do to start a company. Well, let me get money to rent this fucking storefront. Then I have to get inventory. Then I need to get employees who aren't stealing from me. The amount, and I've been involved in brick and mortar businesses too, the amount of effort that goes into it is insane. And a lot of it is a tiny profit margin, a restaurant, we'll be lucky to get an 8% profit margin. It's insane, right? I think it's uh, Nobu in New York, owned by De Niro, is one of the owners, Robert De Niro's. De Niro's, Robert De Niro. Um, I think they have maybe like a six to 8% profit margin. That's considered good for New York. That's insane, right? An online business, I could sell a course for a thousand bucks. What is my profit? Minus taxes, right? Because it's digital. It's a replenishable resource. Um, the only other thing that's a replenishable resource is, is basically uh, prostitutes. I mean, seriously. Um, I'm not saying be a pimp or anything, but, uh, but seriously, you know, because it's like they can renew it, right? You don't have to go out and actually buy new inventory and everything. So, um, yes. Anyway, more freedom equals more time with your wife, your kids, your girlfriend, your girlfriends or even pursuing your actual passions and dreams, right? So most people go to work because we have this thing called bills. I wish to God I would have been born into a wealthy family. Didn't happen. Just didn't have, I would have been the perfect trust fund kid. Just loved to party, blown all the money, probably be dead. Uh, but that didn't happen, right? My parents come from very little means, great people, but just very blue collar, hardworking, um, but just don't have money. So I had to make my own way. But when you have a business, specifically online, and you get it to a certain point where it's bringing in money for you and you have these income streams from various websites, various niches, whatever, then it opens up you to do what you really wanna do. Maybe you really wanna be, have a fucking guitar band or you wanna be in a band, you play the guitar. And you're like, well, on my path to being a rock star, I gotta make some money. And I really don't wanna be a waiter at Chuck E. Cheese. Right? It's just demoralizing. Whenever I put that apron on and I go into work, I just feel like killing myself. Right? I literally, when I've worked shitty jobs, like I literally would sit there in the parking lot before going in and be like, I'm going to go in there and fucking snap. Like, I'm going to be that dude on the news. Um, not really. And then I would go in and smile and everyone's like, oh, he's so personable. And inside I'm like, yeah. But I hated it, right? Because I wasn't free. Yes, you will work your ass off initially when starting a business. Like that's a fact. The people here that own businesses, you know, we probably work more hours than a person working 40 hours a week, but we're working for ourselves. So somehow it's way more motivating. It's so much easier to put in an 18 hour day when I know that I'm getting the profits, right? Um, you can travel when you like, whenever you like. I spent six weeks this summer in Italy, French Riviera, Saint Tropez, Cannes, it was second year in a row, in Spain, right? Just fucking went there. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go, fuck models, buy bottles, too many bottles. 
you know, take a boat out, take a helicopter, just do whatever the fuck I want. Didn't have to ask anyone, hey man, can I get a week off this year? Oh, that date doesn't work out, okay, can I get this one off? And I know, like, I know I'm sounding harsh right now. I'm not knocking on people who work regular jobs. If you work a regular job or you work a traditional job, um, I respect that, if you're happy, great. But I'm talking to the guys here, the ones who are like, I am sick of this shit. I'm sick of not having freedom. I'm sick of not being able to do what I want when I want. And I'm not talking about my traveling to brag. What I'm saying is, a few years ago, I would have never imagined that was possible because a few years ago, I was actually homeless. And I'm not talking about homeless like, I'm crashing on my bro's couch. Not that kind of homeless. I'm talking literally fucking homeless, like sleeping on the street homeless. So that's one reason I get passionate about this. Um, so when you're that far down, right, the idea of traveling to exotic places you've read about in books and stuff, is, it doesn't even fucking enter your mind. You can't even, con you're just like, shit, I need to eat. Literally. <laughs> I was on fucking food stamps. Like, I'm not even kidding. Um, that's why when people see me, they're like, damn, this dude looks good. And I know I do. But it's where the, what backs it up, right? What I came from. I had a girl in New York in a nightclub. Um, she basically approached me. I was like, all right. Anyway, next morning, I was like, what was it about me? And she goes, it's how you walk through the club. She goes, you walk through like a boss. Like, you carry yourself with like a gravitas. And most dudes don't. Most dudes in the club. I, gotta, I can't talk about clubs too long, so I'll go all day. You know, like this. Or they're like, what a bunch of bitches. Right? And they sit there and they jaw, right? They don't, they don't have a commanding presence. Women sense this. But that comes from having the hardships and then overcoming those. Right? So if you're in a hardship right now, yeah, it sucks. But think about when you overcome it, you're going to have an extra energy to you. You're going to have carry yourself a certain way. And it's because of that. So I can do what I want when I want, which to me is priceless, right? When you have that freedom, the world is your playground, right? I was able to come here for a week. I didn't have to ask anyone, hey, can I go? She's like, all right, yeah, I'll go down there. Why not? That is priceless to me. It's, more, it's worth more than money, right? Um, there are people who make a ton of money who work 80, 90 hours a week, and that's all they fucking do. And when they die, guess what? Can't take your money with you. Right? You can maybe leave it to your kids, and they'll probably get a coke habit and become bitches. But, you know what I mean? So for me, it's not just about the money. Right? Yeah, I love money. But I love freedom even more. So for me, the reason why online business really struck a chord was because I was like, wow, the concept of being able to make money literally while I'm sleeping. Right? I'll have days to take a nap. I wake up, and I'm like, oh, cool. I made two grand while I was fucking taking a nap. Sometimes I'll be taking a shit and I'll make money. <laughs> Literally. Or the best part is when you're having sex. And then you're like, oh, cool, all right. Um, but that's because I've set up the systems, right? Couldn't do that if you have another job. Even if I was a stockbroker, I couldn't really do that. Benefit five, it gives you money, right? There is nothing like waking up to sales alerts every morning, nothing. You're actually making money while you're asleep, which means your business is scalable, right? You're not trading time for money. That fucking hamster wheel, you only have so much time in the day, and I'm gonna tell you what, when you get older, I'm 33, I feel like I'm going on 53. And a lot of that's just the lifestyle. Um, but I just like to be out, so. But uh, the older you get, you have less energy. I'm sure a lot of your older cats in here can testify to that, that when you get older, the energy levels go way the fuck down, you have less um, tolerance for bullshit, and you don't have that energy that you had at 23 to start a company. So if you're younger and you're thinking about the entrepreneurship, that's the time to really go for it. You can do it at any age. But if you're younger, take that young viral energy and fucking put it, I was gonna say balls deep, but that doesn't make sense. But you wanna put it completely into fucking building something for yourself, right? Because there's a payoff to all this. It's not just about building an online business and then uh, making the money from that. You obviously can turn around and sell the business. So, a quick story, and not, don't get me wrong on any of this. Like, I'm not saying any of this shit to brag. Like, I am a cocky motherfucker, but I back it up. But I'm actually deeply humble, because I've been to the bottom. That's probably why I have an attitude now, because I've been down there, and I'm like, I'm never fucking going back. Um, but a quick example was I was in Vegas, wound up at Rhino, the strip club, and 
you know, one thing leads to another, whatever. I didn't pull anything. So I get back to the hotel and I left my phone with the cabbie. So I'm like, fuck, here I go again. There was one year I lost six phones. It was just ridiculous. So anyway, I call the phone from the hotel and the cabbie's like, yeah, I'll bring it by. You got to tip me. I'm like, I know, I know. It's fucking Vegas. Everything is a tip. Um, so anyway, he brings it to me and I meet him in valet. And before he hands it to me, the one he goes, what the fuck do you do? I was like, I was so hungover. I was like, what, dude? I don't know. I'm fucking, I don't know. What, what are you talking about? He goes, what do you do? He goes, you got all these alerts on your phone. He's like, you made like 1200 bucks since I've had your phone the last hour. I was like, bro, make money online. I got it. You know, I went to sleep. I had to leave. Um, but that's just an example of like, I'm in the fucking strip club and I'm able to make money. That, I just think that's like a priceless thing. Anybody here that makes money online, you know what I'm talking about. You make money online, right? Yeah, it's a great feeling. Money allows you to help those closest to you, right? Parent needs an operation or a treatment. It's be nice to be able to say, hey, mom, don't worry about that. I got you. You can help. Your child needs to attend a special school. You can send them, no problem. You want to party your ass off with models? Done. So money gives you the power to live the life you want on your terms. I have one of the biggest fundamental flaws I see in people's thinking who are broke is they have an attitude about money. Right? They think money's bad. A lot of that's been ingrained as his children. People misquote that Bible verse all the time. Money is the root of all evil. Well, actually it's not. I've read the Bible through three times. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what the verse says. But people, you know, we get brainwashed into thinking like money's bad, rich people are evil, nice things, we don't want to do that. And it can fuck up our mind and put us in that slave mentality of working for the man. And then at the end of the 20 years, he's going to give you a fake fucking Rolex. <laughs> Benefit six, anti-fragility, which I don't even know if that's a word, but I just went with it. Um, and this, this kills me. This shit gets me fired up. In our increasingly politically correct culture, your job security is probably just a break room wrong comment away from disappearing. Do you enjoy walking on eggshells and censoring yourself 40 hours out of the week? Are you scared of Polly in HR who could get you fired overnight because she took a sideways look from you the wrong way because Aunt Flo was visiting? You motherfuckers know who Aunt Flo is, right? Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Right? I, a friend of mine actually got fired recently from a startup in New York. Um, you know, all these startups. You want to talk about some fucking soy culture. I mean, every dude in there looks like a eunuch. And the girls are like fat and SJWs and just fucking disgusting. Like I literally, especially in New York, there's a lot of this. Like I don't even, I've decided I don't look at like the SJW types. I look through them. So like if they walk past me, like I don't even blink. I don't even acknowledge them. Like if I'm walking through a door and they're there, I'm just like this. Like I literally just don't even fucking acknowledge them. Um, because they want to be cunty, so fuck them. Right? But anyway, he got fired, and the thing, the comment he said was just so like, they were talking about like masculinity in the break room or something. You know, you have this constant fucking politics nowadays. You can't watch football, you can't do anything. Um, and the girl last night asked me, did you vote for Trump? You know. Um, <laughs> so anyway, they, he was in the break room, and someone said something, and all he said was just like, uh, well, I think masculinity is good. You know, like men should be masculine, women should, women should be feminine revolutionary idea <laughs> and gets called in and, and then they found a convenient reason to let him go but it was because of that right you can't even say like yeah I think women with vaginas or people with vaginas should use that bathroom and dudes with cocks should use that bathroom like you say shit like that now and you're considered a weirdo it's fucking insane it literally is I'm gonna put Bruce Jenner on, a, on a, give him an award for cutting his dick off I mean when you think about the insanity though <laughs> It's literally fucking insane. I'm telling you. It's fucking nuts. It's really nuts. But he is a Trump supporter, so I'll give him that. It's because he's a guy. Yeah, exactly. Jobs, I mean, it's funny, I remember, I don't even know if it was when I was a kid, because I don't know if it was, but I remember like seeing the Wheaties boxes with him on there. He was he just like running like this? And then like now he's a woman or whatever. Just fucking, that whole family is fucking crazy. But I would totally knock up one of the sisters in a heartbeat. Job security is a myth. 
right? Having to ask for a raise is emasculating in my book. I know I'm stepping on toes now, but I'm just being honest. When you own your own business, specifically an online business, you can give yourself a raise, AK, release the product, have a sale, or do more marketing, right? If I go, you know what? I need to make 20,000 that next month, extra. Well, come out with a product, right? You're giving yourself a raise. You're not having to ask someone, hey man, you know, can you give me an extra dollar an hour? Which is totally gonna help. I'll make an extra $30 a month. I'll be able to fucking pay for Netflix and eat Wendy's cheeseburgers, you know? When you have a business, you can give yourself a fucking raise. If your brand is based on conflict, then conflict will only grow your business. Okay, mine are not really. I mean, I, I flirt. I flirt with getting, uh, kind of going down that rabbit hole that a lot of guys on Twitter and in kind of our world have done. Because um, I probably would crush it, to be honest. But I just am like, eh. It stresses me out. If I talk about politics too much, I get too fired up. So I've kind of kept my business as much as possible away from conflict with mainstream. But if yours does, well, what does that mean? If you're against mainstream, if you talk shit about fucking trannies, well, you're anti-fragile because everybody here, we're gonna buy your product. Because we're like, cool, all right, we got your back. Right, so if you have a business based on conflict, it's not necessarily a bad thing, depends on what you're doing. This is a fucking fact. The world is only getting more anti-male. I mean, this is just the way it is. I know, I'm gonna rant for a little bit, just a couple minutes. Um, the world's getting very fucking anti-male to the point where I'm considering like moving to the mountains or something. Um, just move a bunch of girls, have some alcohol shipped in. Goldman, you can visit. Rollo, we'll, we'll keep emailing you. Um, no, but it's insane, right? You know, like men have built everything. What I'm standing on built by a man. Man, man, fucking man, technology man, everything. The camera man. Camera man! <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna drink every night before I speak. Um, yeah, right? And then you've got women sitting there bitching about it. Or, you know, the, and I don't wanna get into it too much. But the point is, do you wanna put your income in the hands of the lunatics? Right? I mean, any time, who are the, remember you guys remember the coffee shop guys? Where was that, North Carolina? Remember the two guys that had like a podcast? I can't remember their name. Okay, so they did, they had to close down, right? Yeah, it was Asheville. Because Goldman, you got chased around by feminists there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, they, were, they, were they were literally put on an APB <laughs> on Flake Book. And they were like, uh, find this man. He's talking to women. That's basically what it was. <laughs> God forbid. This is totally normal. Fucking nervous Ned in the corner swiping on fucking fives on Tinder. Right? But you walk up, hey, how are you? <sighs> we're living in a weird fucking time. Um, right, but do you want to put your hand, your income? Like in other words, I'm not. I mean, technically, probably do it. But I mean, me ever doing a corporate job? I mean, they would just fucking Google any little thing about me and be like, "Oh my God, this dude wrote an article how to fuck like a porn star," which is the number one Google search result for that. But above Pornhub. Um, but they would freak out, which I find very hypocritical because you've got what Cosmo magazine that says ten ways to give him great head. So that's fucking normal, but us talking about how to fuck a girl right is weird. Think about that. Um, I don't go into that too much. <laughs> so benefit seven, women. My other favorite topic to talk about, pussy, money. <laughs> this is simple. Women are drawn to men of vision and power. Okay, you ever see Putin's girlfriends? Pretty fucking hot. Um, probably a lot of it is because they don't want to die either. So of course, <laughs> yeah, I'll sleep with you. No problem. When you are the boss, you have a form of power. Now, this is really true. Um, and I, didn't, I really noticed this about two years ago. I really started to see the distinction. That, my hair started receding. That's probably what it was. But when you were in control of your destiny and income, you walk different, you talk different, and you behave differently. It's just a fact. I can, it's kind of, I can't really see real well here. But if I were to walk in a social situation, I can literally pick out who the fuck is probably a business owner and who works for someone. It's just they, they carry themselves totally differently. You're no longer someone's bitch. 
You're the top dog and you behave as such. I know that sounds harsh again. I'm not knocking on anyone working for someone. There's people that have great jobs. They love it. They love what they do. That's awesome. But I'm talking more about those jobs, you know, you don't want. You don't want to do it. Right? You, you are someone's bitch. Right? If you don't show up on time, he's going to bitch you out. So women can sense men who have the control, and they can also sense the men who are controlled. Guess which one they, one they want to have sex with? It's just a fact. Every great man in the world became the man, the boss, the leader at some point in their life. Now, these motherfuckers, I'm not talking about their game, because a few of them have no fucking game. They have negative game. But in terms of, we would not know their name if they did not start something, if they did not build something. Bill Gates, negative fucking game. <laughs> but he started something, right? Elon Musk, PayPal. He was one of the PayPal dudes, made a shit ton of money. Turned around, put it all into Tesla, right? Terrible fucking game. I mean, you watch the video, you know, he'll probably watch this one day and have me killed. Um, <laughs> but if you watch the video with his cunty ex-wife, kind of a cute blonde. I think he actually met her in a club or something. But uh, she's just talking down to him, treating him like shit, and he's just taking it. You're a fucking billionaire. Like, you're literally sending people to space. And you're letting this bitch talk down to you? Oh my God, I would be like, literally just push face planter right out of the camera. Donald Trump, now he's got fucking game. That motherfucker's got game. He said, grab him by the pussy. That's all there's to it. It's the best game ever. And I'll be honest, I have been doing that and it actually works. I'm, listen, I don't mean walk up in the club and just grab him by the pussy. But there's something very interesting. We'll act like this is a large African-American girl right now. And, which, by the way, I did fuck a black girl this big one time. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I did it for the story. But anyway, so when you're talking to her, right, you know, I'm not saying necessarily like in the club or whatever, but like maybe you've made out a little bit and whatnot. You know, you can. You can just reach down there and just kind of cup her pussy while you're whispering in her ear. And it's weird because if you do that, when you talk about something normal, right, so you're, you're in the club, you're making out your vibe, and you're good. It's pretty much in the bag that you're going to take it home. Um, you can reach in there and cup that pussy and then whisper in ear something completely retarded like, can you hand me that napkin? <laughs> right? It's, it's the dichotomy. It fucks with their mind. Um, and they love it. Anyway, Donald Trump, he's got game. Melania's smoking. Jay-Z, I don't know. I think he's got some game, but he's been kind of turned into a little bitch too. Stumping for Hillary and shit. I don't know what's up with that. Andrew Carnegie, right? Leader, steel. So all these dudes, that's just a few, right? They became a boss, they became a leader. They started something. We would not hear of any of these fuckers if they worked for someone else. Can you imagine Donald Trump working at McDonald's? Oh my God. Listen, he'd be like, I'm not giving you your fucking Big Mac. You must build to create real change to influence others and to be a true leader. All right, closing up. Build and cash out, all right? So you can build up a successful online business and then sell it for good old cash. I did that earlier this year with a, a site and a brand of mine. It's cool, right? Build it up, you get the fucking income coming in. And there's actually people that do that, that's all they do. They build up sites and they turn around and sell them. Some people just buy sites, tweak them a bit and sell them. They're online businesses. The easiest, and I say that, the easiest way to become wealthy is to build a business and then sell it. Are you guys familiar with Millionaire Fastlane? Great book, right? If you have not read that, read that book, Millionaire Fastlane. It's phenomenal. Uh, and he follows me on Twitter. But that author, that's his whole thing, right? He built up a limo leads company online back in the day and then sold it for um, seven or eight figures. And now he just does whatever the fuck he wants. Okay, this is a huge industry. You can simply buy and establish an online business outright and scale it more before flipping it. You guys that have money, that you're like, eh, what do I do with this? I'm gonna buy a fucking apartment complex, then I've got people pissing on the wall and I gotta worry about the manager, you know, getting the rents and all that. Real estate's a great investment, but you know what I mean. Maybe you're like, let me diversify, let me do something different. You can buy established online businesses. There's sites where you can go on there, reputable sites. You can go to the marketplace and be like, oh, I do wanna own a pan uh, fucking tampon company, right? This online business, they ship tampons and it makes 80,000 a month and you can buy it for X amount, and then boom, you instantly have an online business. Read the Million Dollar Fast Lane, I already talked about that. I built and sold multiple online businesses, and it's extremely rewarding to create something great and make money from it, right? 
You write books, you make money from that, obviously you make other money too, but it's cool, right? Rollo, you, I know you do very well for yourself, but you also have the books, and it's cool. You created something, you put it out in the world, people are reading that, they're learning from it. Rollo, as we know, um, has changed probably millions of men's lives. That's just a fucking fact. And, uh, and that's amazing because he created something. He disciplined himself to sit down and write, and he writes on the blog, right? He created something. But, which I don't know, well, if with yours, you'd have to be a red pill guy that bought it because <laughs> someone else would probably buy your site and then shut it down. Um, they'd be like, no, keep the truth away from these guys. But you can turn around and sell it, right? And make even more money. And you can use that for investing in another venture. So you don't have to think of it like, oh yeah, I start an online business and that's my life for the next 10 years. No, you build it out, you just turn around and sell it. So reprogram your mind. I tweeted this, actually, I added this in. I tweeted it, it hit a nerve, because it's true. Obsession is not a bad word. Wealth is not a bad word. Rich as fuck is not a bad phrase. Money is merely a tool, one that can be used for good or evil. It has no emotions. It's meant to be gotten. Will you get yours? A lot of money. A lot of money out there. It's unemotional. There's no fucking feelings. Doesn't care. Get yours. So the cost of entrepreneurship. It's cheaper than you think. So it was funny earlier because Anthony was like, do you want to use your laptop? And I'm like, well, it doesn't even have this plug for it. It's kind of a running joke amongst my friends that I have literally a $300 laptop. Now it's like, what? You fucking make money online and you have a shitty laptop. And part of the reason I do that is because the very first laptop I had, I can't remember if it was $170 or $212, uh, where I'd leveled up to renting a car and I would sleep in the car behind a fucking Denny's in North Hollywood off of, uh, it doesn't matter what it's off of, but it's in North Hollywood. And I didn't even really have money to go into Denny's and order food. So I would sit in my car and basically jack their Wi-Fi signal, right? Because it went out into the parking lot. And that laptop was um, just like bottom of the barrel. And since then, you know, I've gone through multiple laptops, but I've always bought cheaper laptops. And for me, I might sound retarded, but for me, it's like a personal motivating tool. Because every time I look at my laptop, it, it just brings me back to when it was, right? And it pushes me. Uh, but the point is, online business. What do you need? A laptop, an internet connection, a can-do attitude, consistency and passion for freedom and to be one's own boss. I'm telling you, if you don't have that passion about, I really just need to be my own fucking boss. I cannot work for someone anymore. If I have to go in one more time, if I have to sit in a meeting here in these fucking idiots, or if your boss is an idiot, how many people have worked for an idiot, right? It sucks. You're like, this dude makes more than me and he's an idiot. Um, you gotta be passionate about it because you'll just, you'll burn out, you won't make it. Uh, and then other tools like email service providers and shit, you're talking maybe 30 bucks a month. It's a joke. I have more um, online business expenses because I have so many sites going on and shit, but even at that, it's like a joke. Like sometimes you're like, what? The hosting is 300 a year? Sure that's all you guys want? It's just like mind blowing. Cost, cheap as fuck. Starting an online business is the cheapest way in the world to create a scalable business that will create a form of passive income for you without breaking the bank on startup cost. Quick sidebar on passive income. Um, you know, everyone preaches passive income, passive. I mean, money, is, it's never really fucking passive. You know what passive income is? Conor McGregor's fucking purse. Mayweather, that's passive income, right? They have so much money, it doesn't matter. Um, but you know, you have to maintain sight here and there. But even at that, um, it can be relatively passive. No rent, no employees. Right, you might need virtual assistants, so you hire some fucking, some nice person in Thailand for 40 bucks a month. No, and if you, if you pay them like double their regular rate, then they really love you. But you're right, that's cheap, plus the write-off. No closing hours, store's never closed. No real overhead, especially if you're selling digital products. Now, I don't, I don't fuck with the physical products. I know a lot of people do drop shipping, so that's different, uh, but I've had experiences, I have sold some stuff online physical, and like, it just drove me insane. I'm all about digital products. Um, no commute to an office. How many people love getting in the car and driving 45 minutes to work? It's, it's nuts. My dad's in construction, and I remember years ago, he fucking had this one job. He had to drive two hours one way to work. Literally two hours there, two hours back, so four hours. What is that, 20 hours a week just fucking getting to your job. God bless his heart, he's an amazing hard worker, but like, come on. 
laptop, internet connection. Just like I said, you can use Starfucks or Denny's. Email service provider. Tell me another business you can start for that cheap that you can make thousands per month and even millions per year, right? I'm passionate about online business because the barrier for entry is super fucking low. Now that also crowds the market, but there's a lot of idiots, so it's not hard to separate yourself. That means you don't need a fancy degree to get started. I have a political science degree, never fucking used it. I had a full ride to law school. My mom like literally broke down crying when I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna go to law school. It worked out for me. I mean, she's fine now. I'm sure she would be like devastated if it didn't. Um, but you don't need a fucking degree to make money online. You don't need a trust fund. You don't need thousand dollars. Just a can do attitude and never quit mentality. Other cost, your free time, right? If you love watching Netflix and chilling on the weekend, then good luck starting any business. It's not going to happen. It will not fucking happen. We, I have never seen such a lazy fucking generation. And I say that like I'm 60 years old or something, but it does blow my mind. Like motherfuckers are just lazy. Like you're not gonna start a business and you can't even like tie your shoelaces right. You can't even brush your hair. You can't even do a push up. How the fuck are you gonna start a business? You will work, but once the systems are in place, they can be run on pretty much autopilot. Right, I have multiple online income streams that generate each four to five figures per month, about one hour per week of maintenance. So once it's fucking established, keeps coming in. Perfect example is, I have a podcast I charge for. Who the fuck charges for a podcast? Me and this other dude, who's, he's huge. I can't think of his name. He was on Loveline. There's Dr. Drew and the other guy. Adam Perot, I think he charges $2.99 a month. I charge seven bucks. But it's not because I'm trying to gouge people, because I have multiple free episodes. It's like 130 episodes or something. Um, it's because it's my time. Granted, it's like two hours a week, but it's my time. And I have like over 1,400 subscribers. So it doesn't have to be something where you're spending a shit ton of time once it's up and you've established it. Relationships to a degree. Now this is gonna get fucking real. If your significant other is holding you back from starting a business, you might have to dump her, right? If you're trying to do some of your life, this is anything really, but if you're trying to really get ahead and you're like, look, I need to get the fuck ahead in life. Someone in my family has to make it, right? And she's holding, well, babe, you don't spend enough time with me. I'm going to spend less, actually. <laughs> right? I mean, you can give me a blowjob when I'm working on my laptop. Then we can spend some quality time together. Um, your cool friends who are so happy for you when you're just like them, but when you start to pull away in terms of success, they accuse you of changing. Right? Man, you're changing. Of course you're changed. You're taking your destiny by the balls. Of course you're going to change. Your sanity will be tested. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're going to be pushed like you've never been pushed before, and that's any kind of business. I don't care if you're opening a laundromat or an online business. If you're taking it serious, you're not treating it like a fucking hobby, uh, which a lot of people do. They're like, yeah, it's, it's, it, you can't make money online. Dude, you're a fucking idiot. You literally put out your product and then didn't tell anyone about it. You just expect magically the internet fairies to send people to your site. Right? So you're going to be pushed, and many quit. Most people quit um, before making real money online. It's a fact, most people quit before having any fucking success. And you can be like the masses, right? And that's why they don't have rewards and they live shitty average lives. So the choice, you have two options. You can continue working for someone else. Nothing wrong with that. Once again, I'm not knocking it, but I'm talking to the guys here who want something different. It's common, average life, generally, because, you know, unless your skill set, you go from fucking, you know, uh, whatever being a manager of a Best Buy, I'm not knocking that, I'm just saying, to a fucking eye surgeon, right? Unless you have that skill set, you're not gonna be able to get that kind of income, generally, unless you start your own fucking business. You'd be a stealing on your income, always a wage slave, always being second tier, and never having true freedom. Or decide you'll become an entrepreneur and you won't stop until you succeed. And I will tell you this, all it takes is one home run. I've had businesses that fucking failed, multiple businesses, I'm sure I'll have more that fail but all it takes is one home run. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick little pitch and then I'll wrap up at the end with one more thing. So it's not my decision. I can only show you the way if you choose to start an online business. So for people who are interested in this, if you're not, tune out, go to the bathroom, do whatever. But I do have a 20 hour online course. This thing is a fucking monster. Um, putting it together cost me my fucking sanity. But it's called Your Profitable Biz Blueprint. 
And it's an A to Z, step by step, paint by the numbers, proven system to creating your very own profitable online business. So basically what I did is I took all the fucking experience I have and the systems, because there's systems in place for making money online. It's not rocket science, it's just fucking following the system, right? You have a fucking product, you have a solution, you gotta get it in front of these people, so you gotta get traffic. The more traffic you get, let's test it. All right, it's converting. All right, it's recruit affiliates, yada, yada, yada. Two things about this course, um, it's not for lazy fucks, right? If you're one of those people that you get like ADD sitting still for like 10 minutes, you're never gonna make it through. Like each fucking lesson is an hour. I mean, it's, it's extremely intense. Plus there's like worksheets, like literally for each lesson. Hey, do this, this, and this. Do this, this, and this. Do this, this, and this. And it takes time. So it's not for lazy fucks and it's not cheap. It's not a cheap course. It's not supposed to be. Um, but it is a massive shortcut and blueprint. One course student of mine had this to say about it. You guys might know Ed Lattimore. Great dude. He's big on Twitter now. He just like blew up. Donald Trump Jr. is following him now. Um, but anyway, edlottimore.com. Actually, I think he was going to speak here. But anyway, he said, your tools and lead pages suggestion probably make me an extra 1,000 per month and attributes to continued sales in my book. Because of the course, my course, I can honestly say I live from the money I make online. Also, I used to think dream boards and goal setting stuff was cheesy. Then Christian starts off the course with them, and so I try them, and I swear they keep me on track whenever I feel like being lazy. I'll be using what I learned from the course too in my next two book launches, along with building a product in a course. I have a great following, but I'd be leaving money on the table and shortchanging them of value if it wasn't for Christian McQueen's course. Highly recommend. And I love Ed to death, but the funny thing is, I didn't even ask him for this. He hit me up and was like, yo, I wanted to tell you, like, all this is going on. It's been blah, 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 blah. Like, do you want, to, you know, do you want a testimony? I was like, all right, sure. Uh, but he's just one of them, right? There's other ones. Anyway, if you're interested in it, you can go to your profitable biz dot com slash join and I do have a 25% off discount for attendees and ends tonight at midnight so the course it's not cheap it's a thousand dollars so the 250 off is 750 and that ends tonight at midnight so if you're interested check it out finally I'll leave you with this and my dad told me this and bless his heart he said it was on 2008 son until you sign your own paycheck you're getting screwed by the company just the way it is which is true. And he still works for someone, but it's one of those things, he's so fucking old, he doesn't have the energy to, you know, he, he knows what he should have done, but he doesn't have the energy now. And then 2017, he told me this, I just want to tell you, I'm really proud of you. And I was like, hello? <laughs> I've always wanted to make money online, but have been trapped in the wage slave cycle. And at my age, 66, it is probably too late for me to start, but I'm glad you made it. The choice is yours. I wish all of you the absolute best in whatever path you choose. Um, I know I'm railing on fucking nine to fivers because I, I just think it's funny, but legitimately, um, and whatever you guys do, if you do decide to start a business, I do wish you the best. It's hard as fuck. It probably will fail, but maybe the third one will hit. Or maybe you'll get lucky and the first one will hit. I'll close with this last little story. Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> Goldman took this photo, actually. Um, anyway, fuck, I got distracted by myself. Um, what was I going to fucking say? Oh yeah, so there, here's an example of hitting it right off the bat. So a guy I know, he actually was a client of mine, he basically created a software product. He had it outsourced in Thailand, or the Philippines, cost about 10 grand. So it would have cost like 300 grand in the US. You always want to outsource stuff like that. But anyway, so he outsourced it. It's basic fucking software. We're not talking about like super fancy software. Recruited affiliates for like six months, did this huge mega launch, and he went from living in his parents' basement, literally. He was, this is not Roosh, he literally was living in his parents' basement. Um, at 26 years old, within one week, he became a multimillionaire. He did over four million on the launch. And his recurring, because there's like an upsell to a subscription, he does recurring around 200,000 a month from one fucking product. Before he worked for Canada Air, it was making like 30K a year. So that's just the point. Now, does that happen with everyone? Obviously not. Um, and he, but he looked at the market. What do they fucking want? What can I create that they'll want? And boom. Anyway, contact. Uh, and if you guys, you can't see it from here, feel free to come up to me afterwards. But anyway, I have a daily email list. I send out one email a day, basically every day, unless I'm so hungover that I literally can't think. 
Uh, and that's at thecad.club. And then my Twitter, twitter.com slash thecadclub. Instagram, thecadclub. I have a forum. It's a free men's forum, realcmqforum.com. And then obviously my blog. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. <laughs>